today we are going to discuss about glycogen metabolism so in glycogen metabolism we have seen two different pathways one is glycogenesis another one is glycogenolysis glycogenesis is an anabolic pathway in which excess of glucose is converted to glycogen glycogenolysis is the catabolic pathway where glycogen is broken down to glucose so already we have discussed about glycogenesis anyway i'm going to rush out glycogenesis so glycogen is a readily mobilized storage form of glucose and this is a very large branched polymer of glucose residues which are connected through alpha 14 and alpha 16 glycosidic bonds structure of glycogen as we have discussed earlier it is composed of alpha 14 and alpha 16 glycosidic linkages and it is a homopolysaccharide which is made up of alpha d glucose units this glycogen is stored in two important tissues one is liver another one is skeletal muscle liver is having the weight of 1800 g in that 90 g will be occupied by glycogen in muscle around 35 kg of muscle mass 245 g will be occupied by our glycogen and in the extracellular glucose among 10 liters of blood nearly 10 g of glycogen is available as extracellular glucose what is glycogenesis it is the pathway for the formation of glycogen from glucose it occurs in liver and skeletal muscle and the site is cytosol and there are four steps that are involved in glycogenesis one is activation of glucose initiation elongation and glycogen branching what is activation of glucose this glucose one phosphate combines with utp to form udp glucose with the help of the enzyme udp glucose pyrophosphorylase and the formed pyrophosphate is immediately broken down into two molecules of inorganic phosphate now we have obtained the activated form of glucose called udp glucose in the initiation stage we are in need of a glycogen or glycogen primer is needed for the formation of glycogen synthesis this glycogen primer is formed from a protein backbone called glycogen so this glycogen combines with the udp glucose and only one glucose unit which is attached with udp will be added to this glycogen backbone protein backbone so that glycogen primer will be formed and this glycogen primer will be combining with other udp molecules udp glucose molecules so that glucose will be added one by one and finally we will be getting the structure of glycogen but the initiation process needs a primer called glycogen primer this is formed with the help of a backbone called glycogen and coming to the elongation of glycogen synthesis the elongation occurs with the help of the enzyme glycogen synthase once the glycogen primer is ready each and every glucose molecule will be added with the help of the enzyme called glycogen synthase and this glycogen synthase is considered to be the key regulatory enzyme in glycogen synthesis and the last point is branching of glycogen so branching abdin varumbodhu na yetnave ungalku discuss pannirundha branching point vandu it arises every 11th residue 11 glucose residues alpha 14 glycosidic bond moolama ignite aayite varumbodhu one branching point will be arising and that branching point or branching enzyme which is going to help in the branching point is called as amylo 14 16 trans glucosidase this branching enzyme is helpful for the formation of new alpha 16 glycosidic linkage so glycogen synthase is a key regulatory enzyme and one more branching enzyme is helpful in the formation of branching points so many branching points can be seen in glycogen that is the difference between starch and glycogen starch the branching points kammi a irukum ana glycogen porta varaikum the branching points are numerous numerous branching points you can see every 11 glucose residues one from a branching point arise aite irukum 
So, in this case, the branching point is numerous. It is considered to be an insoluble structure. In a structure, it is an insoluble structure. And it exerts no osmotic pressure. Osmotic pressure exerts pannada and it is actually undiffusible in nature. We have to store the liver and skeletal muscle. It is diffused. It is diffused. It is an insoluble structure. It is glycogen converted. And it is also going to protect us. The liver from harmful drugs and toxins. It has the toxic drugs in our system, like carbon tetrachloride, or ethyl alcohol, or poison. It has the irritant that brings to us. That is why we have to protect the liver. One of the most important organs we have to protect is the liver. And liver has stored in the liver. And liver has stored in the liver. Glycogen is the protective mechanism that we have to help. And the, the overall uh, pathway of glycogenesis, that is glucose 1 phosphate, which is formed from glucose through phosphorylation by using ATP, the help of the enzyme hexokinase or glucokinase. And the fourth glucose 6 phosphate will be converted to glucose 1 phosphate with the help of the enzyme phosphoglucomutase. And glucose 1 phosphate combines with the UDP to form UDP glucose. And the UDP glucose, which is considered to be the activated form of glucose, combines with glycogen and protein backbone to form glycogen primer. And this glycogen primer, which is now ready with glucose residues, non-reducing end, the glucose residues is ready, that is called as glycogen primer. This glycogen primer is now going to be added with a molecule of glucose from UDP glucose. So, one of the glucose molecule, UDP glucose lay in the glycogen primer would add as a add as a and we will be getting an alpha 1,4 glycosidic linear chain of glucose residues with the help of the enzyme glycogen synthase. So, once one in the linear chain form, 10 residues, 11 residues complete as a branching point arise and the branching enzyme is called amylo 1,4,1,6 trans glucosidase. And the branching enzyme would help for a complete glycogen structure will be formed. Regulation of glycogenesis this is very important because glycogenesis and glycogenolysis will not occur simultaneously. Once glycogenesis narande glucose glycogen are stored as an immediate glycogenolysis narande exadarikra and the glucose stored formula and the glycogen marbi wena panada glucose convert panada. That is Glycogenesis and glycogenolysis will not occur simultaneously. In the one way, not only glycogenesis will occur, but also glycogenolysis will occur. So, if the two are simultaneous, then it will not occur simultaneously. Glycogenesis will not occur simultaneously. Glycogen synthase will not occur simultaneously. Glycogenolysis will not occur simultaneously. Phosphorylation will not occur simultaneously. It will not occur simultaneously. If there is one key regulatory enzyme that is activated, then what happens is that the glycogenesis and glycogenolysis will be one of the things that we have to do. So, the hormones and enzymes will play an important role. If we have insulin and glucomone roles, we have discussed earlier, again I am repeating, the glucohorn which is helpful in the regulation of blood glucose by increasing the level of glucose in blood. Blood le, glucohorn ena pannu na, glucose oda level le raise pannu. Apa yeda favor pannu? It will be favoring glycogenolysis. Adavda glycogen breakdown ahi, glucose na mari na adam blood le glucose oda level raise up, adavda increase up. So adit help pannu hormone mande glucohorn. So this glucohorn comes and binds with the glucohorn receptor on the cell, so that the production of cyclic AMP will be increased with the help of ATP. So, glucohorn when the glucohorn receptor la bind and the caprama, ATP is converted to cyclic AMP and this cyclic AMP is called as a secondary messenger and this secondary messenger is going to activate another protein called protein kinase that is cyclic AMP dependent protein kinase. So this cyclic AMP dependent protein kinase will be having two regulatory and two catalytic subunits. In the regulatory subunit, so in the catalytic subunit, so it will in the cyclic AMP point and the in the regulatory subunit, so it will attach to it. 
அப்ப ரெண்டு கேட்டலிட்டிக் சப் யூனிட்ஸ் மட்டும் ஃப்ரீ ஆச்சுனா திஸ் ஸ்ட்ரக்சர் பிகம்ஸ் ஆக்டிவ் சோ திஸ் சைக்ளிக் ஏஎம்பி டிபெண்டன்ட் புரோட்டீன் கைனேஸ் will be having two regulatory sub units and two catalytic sub units so with the two regulatory sub units the cyclic amp will go and attach so that the two catalytic sub units will be set free so on the end the catalytic sub units free anadnala in the protein kinase will become active active aichathu if active ana cyclic amp dependent protein kinase will in turn convert active glycogen synthase to inactive glycogen synthase ஏனா glucuronoடைய ultimate aim வந்து glycogen genolysis தான் ஃபேவர் பண்ணனும் glycogenesis ல inhibit பண்ணிடும் அப்ப glycogenesis ல inhibit பண்ணனும் அப்படினு சொன்னா glycogen synthase ஐ inhibit பண்ணாதா அந்த process inhibit ஆகும் so அந்த process ஐ inhibit பண்ணனும் அப்படிங்கிறதுக்காக என்ன பண்ணிரணும்னா glycogen synthase should be inactivated so how this glycogen synthase is inactivated ஏற்கனவே நம்ம பாத்துருக்கோம் ரிவர்சிபிள் பாஸ்பாரலேஷன் மெக்கானிசம் மூலமா சில என்சைம்ஸ் ஆக்டிவேட் ஆகலாம் சில என்சைம்ஸ் வந்து இன்ஆக்டிவேட் ஆகலாம் தட் இஸ் கால்ட் ஆஸ் கோவலன் மாடிஃபிகேஷன் ஆஃப் என்சைம்ஸ் இப்ப நம்ம என்ன பண்றோம்னா ग्लाइकोजन சிந்தேஸ பாஸ்பாரலேட் பண்ணிட்டோம்னா அதுல இருக்கிற சிந்தேஸ் ग्लाइकोजन சிந்தேஸ் அப்படினா இட் இஸ் an என்சைம் என்சைம் அப்படினா இட் இஸ் a protein protein னால இட் இஸ் காம்போஸ்ட் ஆஃப் அமினோ அசிட் அப்ப அதுல இருக்கிற அமினோ ஆசிட்ல ஏதாவது அமினோ ஆசிட்ல லைக் சிரைன் பிரியோனைன் இந்த மாதிரியான ஏதாவது அமினோ ஆசிட்ல பாஸ்பாரலேஷன் நடந்துச்சுனா பாஸ்பாரலேஷன் அப்படினு சொன்னா அடிஷன் ஆஃப் பாஸ்பேட் குரூப் சோ அப்ப பாஸ்பேட் குரூப் ஆட் ஆகணும் அப்படினா யாராவது ஒருத்தர் டோனரா இருக்கணும் அந்த மாதிரியான டோனர் தான் ATP சோ ATP ஆக்ட் அஸ் a பாஸ்பேட் டோனர் அப்ப பாஸ்பேட் குரூப்ப டொனேட் பண்றதுனால ग्लाइकोजन சிந்தேஸ் இப்ப என்ன ஆயிடுதுனா பாஸ்பாரலேட் ஆயிடுது பாஸ்பாரலேட் ஆகறதுனால இட் பிகம் இன்ஆக்டிவ் so this enzyme becomes inactive by the addition of phosphate group with the help of the enzyme cam dependent protein kinase if a glycogen synthase when the phosphorylate agi inactivate aagradnala glycogenesis vand inhibit aagidum adhe nerathila in the glycogen synthase yaar activate pannuvaana insulin is a stimulant insulin enna panidum glycogenesis da favor pannum ena insulin na poruthu varaikum enna job irukku பிளட்ல குளுக்கோஸோட லெவல குறைக்கணும் அதுதான் இன்சுலினோட ஃபங்க்ஷன் அப்ப என்ன பண்ணிடும் எக்ஸஸா இருக்கிற குளுக்கோஸ் எல்லாம் கிளைக்கோஜனா மாத்துறதுக்கு தான் அது ஃபேவர் பண்ணும் அப்ப இன்டர்ன் இட் இஸ் ஃபேவரிங் கிளைக்கோஜெனிசிஸ் அப்ப என்ன பண்ணிடும்னா புரோட்டீன் பாஸ்பட்டேஸ் அப்படிங்கிற என்சைம ஸ்டிமுலேட் பண்ணி ஏற்கனவே நமக்கு இனாக்டிவ் ஃபார்ம்ல இருக்கிற அந்த பாஸ்பாரலேட்டர் கிளைக்கோஜன் சிந்தேஸ டி பாஸ்பாரலேட் பண்ணி மறுபடியும் ஆக்டிவ் ஃபார்ம்க்கு கன்வெர்ட் பண்ணிடும் சோ தட் கிளைக்கோஜெனிசிஸ் இஸ் ஸ்டிமுலேட்டட் so this is all about the regulation of glycogenesis next we move on to glycogenolysis the glycogenolysis is a degradation of glycogen to glucose 6 phosphate and glucose in muscle and liver nothing but breakdown of glycogen to glucose in liver and skeletal muscle it also occurs in the cytosol what are the three different steps in glycogenolysis action of glycogen phosphorylase action of debranching enzyme and formation of glucose so these three important steps are to be occurring in glycogenolysis what is the role of glycogen phosphorylase glycogen phosphorylase oda vela enna na glycogen la irundhu namakku ovvoru glucose molecule ah eduthu eduthu thani thaniya kudukkaradha inda phosphorylase oda function so glycogen abdinum bodu adula n number of glucose residues irukum it is numerous number less count panave mudiyadha and alavuku glucose residues irukum inda phosphorylase enna pannum oru oru glucose ah adula endu pirichu pirichu kudukum by adding with inorganic phosphate inorganic phosphate adula add aagum bodu you will be getting the structure called glucose 1 phosphate so phosphorylase oda function enna na glycogen la endu oru oru glucose ah release panni adha inorganic phosphate oda add panni glucose 1 phosphate ah kudukradha indha phosphorylase oda function and debranching enzyme oda role nama paakumbodhu there are two different roles onnu vandu enna na the debranching enzyme eh rendu different function ah carry out pannum first debranching enzyme is glucon transferase இங்க வந்து glucosal forest co transferase இருக்கு and that enzyme is going to play one role 
another debranching enzyme called alpha 16 glucosidase so two debranching enzymes are going to play an important role generally nam enna solluvona debranching enzyme is performing a dual role rendu role vandu carry out panna pora in this diagram you can see the work of phosphorylase phosphorylase enna pannu appadina each and every glucose residue will be removed from glycogen glycogen la enna oru oru glucose residue va remove panni kudukkaradha inda phosphorylase oda function ana inda phosphorylase oda function edhu varaikum nadakkum appdi paathina you can see one branching point here so nearly vandu oru four glucose units vandu branching point oda irukku appdi solumbodhu அதுல அந்த பிரான்சிங் பாயிண்ட்ட மட்டும் விட்டுட்டு மேல இருக்கக்கூடிய 3 குளுக்கோஸ் ரெசிடுஸ் டோட்டலா ட்ரான்ஸ்ஃபர் பண்ணி மெயின் பிரான்ச்சுக்கு கொண்டு போறதா அந்த குளுகான் ட்ரான்ஸ்பிரேஸ் ஓட ஃபங்க்ஷன் சோ குளுகான் ட்ரான்ஸ்பிரேஸ் இஸ் गोइंग டு ஹெல்ப் இன் தி ட்ரான்ஸ்ஃபரிங் ஆஃப் 3 குளுக்கோஸ் யூனிட்ஸ் फ्रॉम தி பிரான்சிங் பாயிண்ட் பிரான்சிங் பாயிண்ட்ல ஒவ்வொரு குளுக்கோஸ் ரெசிடுவா ரிமூவ் பண்றது ஃபாஸ்பரோலைஸ் ஓட ஃபங்க்ஷன் சோ எது வரைக்கும் அந்த ஃபாஸ்பரோலைஸ் ஃபங்க்ஷன் பண்ணனும் பாத்தீங்கனா and the branching point la total a the four glucose residues irukra varaikku inda function carry out pannu ore oru glucose residue adhaavadhu branching point la attach a irukra ore oru glucose residue vittu a trisaccharide unit oru moon glucose residue irukra inda trisaccharide unit a apdiye transfer panni main branch ku maathra da inda glucon transferase node function and another debranching enzyme it is called as 16 glucosidase this 16 glucosidase is going to break the alpha 16 glycosidic bond so that a linear chain will be formed if i in the madri branching points la one 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 cut panni vittu finally namak linear chain form panni adukapra phosphorylase oru oru glucose ah release panna finally you will be getting one glucose one phosphate idu da vandu glycogenolysis and again i am repeating the phosphorylase is going to remove each and every glucose residue as glucose 1 phosphate and this process will be continuing until the branching point will be having four glucose residues and the trisaccharide unit will be transferred from the branching point to the main branch and this is done with the help of the enzyme glucan transferase and the branching point with alpha 16 glycosidic linkage is going to be removed by the debranching enzyme and finally a main branch will be formed and again uh, glucose phosphorylase will be cleaving each and every glucose residue and finally forms glucose one phosphate and this is the process of glycogenolysis so what are the two key enzymes involved in the regulation of glycogen metabolism one is glycogen synthase for glycogenesis and other one is glycogen phosphorylase for glycogenolysis both the enzymes are reciprocally regulated here you can see that is glucose 1 phosphate is converted to glycogen by the process called glycogenesis with the help of the enzyme glycogen synthase so this glycogen synthase will be activated by the enzyme protein phosphatase and deactivated by the enzyme protein kinase at the same time the formed glycogen can be broken down to form glucose 1 phosphate with the help of the enzyme glycogenolysis where the key enzyme glycogen phosphorylase is going to be activated by phosphorylase kinase and deactivated by the enzyme protein phosphatase so that we are going to see in detail regulation of glycogenolysis the glycogenolysis will be having the key regulatory enzyme called glycogen phosphorylase so how it is going to be regulated we will discuss now glucagon will come and bind with the receptor glucagon receptor in the cell in the plasma membrane of the cell so that cyclic amp is formed and this cyclic amp in turn forms cyclic amp dependent protein kinase inactive form to active form cyclic amp will be binding with the two regulatory subunits of the cyclic amp dependent protein kinase so that two catalytic subunits will be set free now this enzyme gets activated this active cyclic amp dependent protein kinase in turn activates another enzyme called phosphorylase kinase 
phosphorylase kinase inactive form ல இருந்து active form க்கு மாறணும் அப்படினு சொன்னா அந்த இடத்துல ஒரு phosphate group ஆட் ஆயி இருந்திருக்கணும் திரும்ப phosphate donor வந்து ATP நான் ஏற்கனவே சொன்ன புரோட்டீன் கைனேஸ் கைனேஸ் னு எங்க வந்தாலும் ஒரு phosphate transfer இருக்கும்னு சொல்லி இருந்தோம் இப்போ inactive ஆன அந்த phosphorylase kinase இப்போ activated form க்கு convert ஆயி so this we can the very well see in muscle muscle la glycogenolysis nadakkum bodu enna maari condition la nadakkum appdin paathinga na muscle contract aagudhu appdin sonnale energy thevai appa calcium enna pannum na in the process a favor pannum so increased level of calcium will in turn favors glycogenolysis so calcium oda level adhigama irukkum bodu in the cyclic amp dependent protein kinase will be activating phosphorylase kinase if active ah irukra phosphorylase kinase enna pannumna nammude key enzyme ana glycogen phosphorylase ah poittu inactive form la irund active form ku maathi kudukku so active form ku maathi kuduthudna thirumba you notice the name of the enzyme it is phosphorylase kinase so it is going to add one phosphate group to glycogen phosphorylase so appo or phosphate group idla add aayiruchu appdin sonna enna aagum appa இந்த என்சைம பொறுத்தவரைக்கும் பாஸ்பாரலேட் ஆன ஆக்டிவேட் ஆகும் பட் யூ நோட்டீஸ் ग्लाइकोஜன் சிந்தேசிஸ் இஃப் இட் கெட்ஸ் பாஸ்பாரலேட்டட் இட் பிகம்ஸ் இனாக்டிவ் யூ கேன் நோட் டவுன் தி டிஃபரன்ஸ் ग्लाइकोஜன் பாஸ்பாரலேஸ் இஃப் இட் கெட்ஸ் பாஸ்பாரலேட்டட் இட் பிகம்ஸ் ஆக்டிவ் ग्लाइकोஜன் சிந்தேசிஸ் இஃப் இட் கெட்ஸ் பாஸ்பாரலேட்டட் இட் பிகம்ஸ் இனாக்டிவ் சோ அப்ப ग्लाइकोஜன் பாஸ்பாரலேஸ் இஸ் ஆக்டிவ் ஃபார்மா அதாவது பாஸ்பாரலேட்டட் ஃபார்ம் இருக்கும்போது ஆக்டிவ் ஃபார்மா இருக்கிற இந்த ग्लाइकोஜன் பாஸ்பாரலேஸ் will in turn enter into glycogenolysis pathway that helps in the breakdown of glycogen to glucose at the same time insulin will be uh, insulin will be playing antagonistic role antagonistic role na glucagon ku apdi opposite role play pannu appa idu enna pannidu insulin enna pannu epdiyavada in the glycogen phosphorylase deactivate pannanu abingiradha it is the aim of insulin அப்போ என்ன பண்ணனும்னா இட் will be activating the enzyme protein phosphatase so that this phosphorylase kinase becomes inactive phosphorylase kinase எப்ப இன்ஆக்டிவ் ஆகும்னா ஒன்னு இன்சுலின் protein phosphatase activate பண்ணாலும் இன்ஆக்டிவேட் ஆகும் கால்சியம் லெவல் டவுன் ஆனாலும் அது இன்ஆக்டிவேட் ஆகும் அப்ப இந்த phosphorylase kinase ஏ இன்ஆக்டிவேட் ஆயிடுச்சுனா அதுக்கு அப்புறம் அதால glycogen phosphorylase phosphorylate பண்ண முடியாது so that glycogenolysis will not occur and repeating whenever glucagon binds with the glucagon receptor atp is converted to cyclic amp and this cyclic amp is a secondary messenger this secondary messenger in turn goes and activates the protein kinase called cyclic amp dependent protein kinase this cyclic amp dependent protein kinase whenever it gets activated in the presence of increased calcium levels in muscle it will be activating phosphorylase kinase enzyme this enzyme is going to activate another enzyme this protein kinase is going to activate another enzyme called phosphorylase kinase this inactive phosphorylase kinase is activated to activate active phosphorylase kinase and this active phosphorylase kinase in turn phosphorylates glycogen phosphorylase glycogen phosphorylase in the enzyme adu phosphorylate panirchuna glycogen phosphorylase becomes active so that glycogenolysis will occur adhe nerathila insulin enna panidruna in the process deactivate pandradukaga protein phosphatase in the enzyme activate pannum adanalu phosphorylase kinase e inactivate aayidu phosphorylase kinase illana glycogen phosphorylase activated form ku maara mudiyadu நாம glycogen synthase ஓட regulation பாக்கும்போது என்ன சொல்லிருந்தோம்னா directly the cyclic amp dependent protein kinase will be inactivating glycogen synthase ana inga pathinga it needs another enzyme to support that is called as phosphorylase kinase phosphorylase kinase activate பண்ணிட்டு அந்த phosphorylase kinase தான் போய் glycogen phosphorylase activate பண்ணும் so this is the mechanism of regulation of glycogenolysis and this is the overall glycogen metabolism glucose is phosphorylated to form glucose 6 phosphate glucose 6 phosphate is converted to glucose 1 phosphate and this glucose 1 phosphate combines with udp to form udp glucose and udp glucose 
combines with the glycogen primer that is glycogenase is converted to glycogen primer and this glycogen primer will be added with one one molecule of glucose from udp glucose and then udp will be released for recycling process and this glycogen primer along with a molecule of glucose will be added with another molecule of glucose and forms alpha 14 glycosidic unit with the help of glycogen synthase and the glycogen synthase is considered to be the key regulatory enzyme of glycogenesis and alpha 14 glycosyl units will be formed and make a linear chain of glycogen but that is not enough for the complete formation of glycogen we are in need of alpha 16 glycosidic bonds and that is done with the help of the d branching enzyme called amylo 14 amylo 16 transglucosidase so in the branching enzyme mode we have glycogen form and the form on the glycogen now it is ready and this is the process of glycogenesis and apdi vandu ungalku glycogenolysis paathinga it is breakdown of glycogen to form glucose but this for pathway these two pathways will not occur simultaneously eplave soliyaachu glycogen glyco sorry glycogen glucose one phosphate up breakdown aagradhukku you need another enzyme called glycogen phosphorylase and uh, uh, that is rebranching enzyme is bifunctional in nature the one one of the roles is glucan transferase and another one is debranching enzyme so glucan transferase enna pannum abingiradhu nam paathirundho glycogen phosphorylase will be helpful in the removal of every glucose residue from glycogen structure so edhu varaikku adu nadakkum abina branching point la four glucose residues attach a irukra varaikku nadakkum and mele irukra trisaccharide units mattum transfer aagi main branch ku poradhukku help pandrathu glucan transferase and once vandu the branching point mattum touch a irukkum bodu and the branching point remove pandra enzyme da amylo 16 transglucosidase so and amylo 16 transglucosidase use panikittu total a vandu branching point e cut aayidum fullave irukiradhu ellame linear chain a maaridum and the linear chain la irundha thirumba oru oru glucose residue va cut pandrathu vandu glycogen phosphorylase so that glycogen phosphorylase is considered to be the key regulatory enzyme of glycogenolysis and glycogen glycogen synthase is the key regulatory enzyme of glycogenesis okay and the formed glucose one phosphate is converted to glucose six phosphate and glucose six phosphate is converted to glucose with the help of the enzyme glucose six phosphatase and the, the final hormonal regulation of glycogen metabolism in which we can see how the hormones insulin and glucagon are helpful in the regulation of metabolism so here you can see glycogen is broken down to glucose one phosphate with the help of the enzyme glycogen phosphorylase and glucose one phosphate can be stored as glycogen with the help of the enzyme glycogen synthase so which is going to favor which pathway insulin is going to favor glycogenesis by favoring the stimulation of the enzyme glycogen synthase adavad glycogen synthase activate pandradhu moolama glycogenesis sa favor pandra hormone vandu insulin adhe nerathila glucagon um epinephrine um rendu ore maadhiriyana role da play pannum indha glucagon um epinephrine um enna pannum na glycogenolysis sa favor pannum by activating the enzyme glycogen phosphorylase so in the process vandu eppadi carry out aagudhu abbingiradha inga paathukinga insulin insulin is going to inhibit cyclic amp cyclic amp if it not get activated it cannot inhibit glycogen synthase so that glycogenesis will be promoted by insulin and in the same way glucagon and epinephrine will be activating cyclic amp if cyclic amp gets activated it in turn activate glycogen phosphorylase so that glycogenolysis will occur so this is the hormonal regulation of glycogen metabolism hope you understood the process of glycogen metabolism if you have any doubts you can share with me you can share with me you can share with me you can share with me